rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us observe a moment of silence to reflect upon God's word and examine our hearts.
every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Be it done for you as you desire. 
and her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Hmm. 
I don't think that's true, but you seem to hear it a lot, whether from the group ahead of us or behind us. I think everyone likes to consider himself or herself to be unique in one way or another. Whether you are a rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, merchant, or chief, whether you are a farmer, businessman, housewife, teacher, student, or a baby boomer, you probably would not appreciate hearing someone say about you and all the others in your classification, you are all the same. We don't want to be the same as everyone else. We like to think that we're different. We're special. We're not just a carbon copy of everyone else. Yet, as we look at Paul's letter to the Romans, we are confronted with a striking statement. He reveals to the Jews and Gentiles and reveals to us this morning that before God, we are all the same. Before God, none of us is deserving of special blessings because we are somehow unique or special. When we consider our sins and God's grace, we are faced with the undeniable conclusion that there is no difference at all. We may be faced with that conclusion, but that doesn't mean it is easy for us to accept. I have noticed that when people are confronted with their sins, they frequently attempt to point out the differences between themselves and others. You know, I've heard statements like, well, I know I'm not perfect, but at least I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Or, sure, I've got a few bad habits, but at least I don't do such and such like a lot of people I know. These and similar statements are attempts to convince others that there are different degrees of sinfulness. And of course, from a human perspective, we would have to say definitely there's a difference between certain types of sins. I mean, who would seriously say that we should punish a jaywalker with the same severe penalty that we would hand out for a mass murderer? Certainly in the eyes of man, it might be legitimately said that there are degrees of sin. Yet you will find no such judgment in the eyes of God. Before God, there is no difference between sinners. The Word of God states with crystal clarity that all are sinners, that all have failed. Earlier in Romans, we heard those inescapable words. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Paul is not alone in making these statements. The psalmist declares, they have all gone astray. They are all alike corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. In Ecclesiastes we read, there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Then two of there are those strong words of Isaiah. We have all become as one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. In the New Testament, John adds, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Thus, as we confront the scriptures, we are forced to admit and confess that we all alike have sinned that we all alike have failed. There is no difference between any of us. And just as we have all sinned, so also we confess that all are likewise bound in slavery to sin and disobedience. The last verse of our text states inclusively, for God has consigned all to disobedience. This point was clearly shown in the lives of those who read these words of Paul. He pointed his finger first at the Jews and showed how they had all disobeyed. In earlier times, they had sinned against God and were forced to spend oh, 40 years wandering in the wilderness. They rejected God's word when they murdered the prophets. And finally, and most tragically, they disobeyed when they refused to accept the Messiah in the person of Jesus. At this point, no doubt, the Jews... Uh, 
were feeling the weight of the law, and the Gentiles were probably getting a little puffed up, but to keep them from getting too full of themselves, Paul brought them down a few notches as well by reminding them that they too had disobeyed. In our text, they are told, just as you were at one time disobedient. The condition of the Gentiles prior to believing was no different than that of the Jews. They were lost and condemned sinners. Paul's words to the Ephesian Gentiles applied to all. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. The Gentiles had shown their unbelief by worshiping all sorts of false and immoral idols. The universal condemnation that fell upon the Jews fell on the Gentiles as well. And dear friends, it falls equally on us too. God reveals through Paul that we too have disobeyed. We've broken God's law in that we have done countless acts in thought, word, and deed that God has forbidden. We have ignored God's commandments and that we have not done the things that He has required. We have not always trusted completely in Him and His Word. We have too often found our ultimate comfort and purpose in serving ourselves and chasing after the pleasures of this world. Along with the Jews and Gentiles of Paul's day, we too must confess that we are bound in slavery to sin and disobedience. There is again no difference. There is likewise no difference in the fact that we are all unable by ourselves to escape from condemnation. Neither the Jews nor the Gentiles nor we ourselves can break out of the prison in which we are bound by reason of our sin. The Jews had the law and the promises of God, but they failed. The Gentiles, who did not have the law and promises, failed as well. If left to ourselves, if trusting only in our own strength and resources, we too must fail. At this point in Paul's message, everywhere we turn, it seems that we encounter darkness and doom. The word of God's judgment strikes home, painfully and inescapably. We are forced to admit that, yes, we have sinned and failed in God's sight. Yes, we are slaves to sin and disobedient. Yes, we are struck, stuck, for we cannot pull ourselves out of the sins and their condemnation, no matter how hard we try. Those words which we spoke just moments ago in the confession, then become more than just lip service that we offer to God. Yes, Lord, we confess that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. How many times have we spoken those words without considering the true nature of what we are confessing? We are telling God that we truly deserve the full extent of his punishment to make our life on this earth a living hell and then, when this life is over, to banish us to eternal and God will be altogether just and fair in doing so. We take our place to the sinners of all ages. We stand condemned, all of us, helpless. There is no difference among us. And yet, it is at this point that Paul shines a light into our darkness, a light which draws us to its warmth, to its security, a light which dawns with comfort and consolation. That light is the precious message of the gospel. It is true that there is no difference among us. Before God, we all stand as sinners. But it is also 
and forever true that there is no difference among us for before God we all stand as objects of his mercy. As the last verse of our text joyfully proclaims, for God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. In truth, we can declare that the Son of God has come for all. When Jesus left his throne on high and was born into this world, he did so to seek and to save the lost. All the lost. He lived a life of perfect obedience for all. He died and was punished in the place of all sinners. We affirm the truth of Scripture that Christ did not come only for the good people, the upstanding people, the outwardly righteous people. Neither did he come only for those who would eventually believe in him. Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again for all sinners of all ages. Even now, that same Son of God stands before his Father to plead for all. We proclaim the glorious message of deliverance, is, which is reflected in those beautiful words of the hymnist. Lord, I believe we're sinners more than sands upon the ocean shore. Thou hast for all a ransom paid, for all a full atonement made. Lord, I believe thy precious blood, which at the mercy seat of God forever doth for sinners plead. For me, even for my soul, was shed. With boldness and confidence we can await the day of final judgment. For we know from God's own revelation that His mercy extends to all. We don't have to live in fear and doubt about our final destination. When Christ cried from the cross, it is finished. What was completed was our salvation. In that salvation, we have the assurance that all of our sins and acts of disobedience have been paid for and forgiven. As Paul proclaimed to the Corinthians, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. When our life in this world draws to a close, and when that day of judgment dawns, we know that we shall be granted a place for eternity in our Father's house. As Christ promised Nicodemus, he also promises us with among the most comforting words in all of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Whoever you are, whatever you have been, this promise is for you. All reveals to us this morning. There is no difference. Without Christ, we have no other choice than to sin. We lie under the curse of God and will be lost forever. But also from another perspective, there is no difference. In Christ we have mercy. We are holy and righteous in God's eyes. Our sins are forgiven. We can thus this day and every day declare triumphantly, again, in the words of the hymn, since Christ has full atonement made and brought to us salvation, each Christian therefore may be glad and built on this foundation. Thy grace alone, dear Lord, I plead, for death is now my life indeed, for thou hast paid my ransom. Amen. We rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. May you keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we continue with our confession of faith and say together the Nicene Creed.
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory, Judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. In our prayers this morning, we ask God to be with Ken Burke and his family. Uh, Ken has been undergoing uh, some treatments, and we'll be having a procedure done tomorrow, which uh, hopefully will greatly uh, enhance his body's ability to fight off uh, sickness. Let us bow our heads in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and grace which although we do not deserve them, you still provide for us in abundance. Help us to confess our sins and deal with them in repentance and faith. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us continually as we strive to serve you in all that we say and do. Lord of life, we ask you to bless all of our members who are suffering physical needs, especially do we ask that your hand of healing and strength would rest upon them. Thank you for the doctors and medical staff who are able to battle all manner of diseases. Be with your servant and with the members of his family, granting your comfort and hope as they look to you and know that all of our lives are always in your gracious name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the gathering of our offering. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
rise. And we join in singing, thank the Lord, and sing his prayer.
a wonderful time. Not only great food, uh, certainly that, but also a great time working together. Uh, we have some things coming up in the weeks ahead. School will be starting uh, a week from tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot more on the schedule. Uh, <clears throat> assignment for life will be in the next couple of, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, that will be starting on the next month as well. So keep an eye on the calendar and bulletin uh, for things I don't want you to miss out as we start our fall program. The Lord, who watches over you and blesses you, and reminds you of your sins, also reminds you of his abundant grace. And in his eyes, you are perfect and holy, just like Jesus. There is no difference. Mm -hmm.